Hi everyone, thanks for joining our webinar today. Our focus topic is to show you how to use Power Apps to support your project management processes. My name is Sarah Howard and I'm with a Microsoft Gold partner called Pragility. We've been implementing Microsoft PPM solutions for over 16 years now for large enterprises, and that includes everything from engineering, construction, IT, and new product development. Uh, at Progility, we're known in the Microsoft and PPM community as experts in all things project and portfolio management. PMOs and CIOs typically come to us when they can't easily explain what's going on across all of their projects, they don't know what resources are working on what work, and they have a hard time getting consistent reports and metrics to make project-based decisions. We do offer services and solutions in three core areas, the first being deployment and consulting services. This is Progility's core business where we provide professional services for successfully planning and implementing Microsoft project and portfolio management, including Microsoft's project online, integrating PPM with line of business applications, and delivering strategic portfolio management solutions to support top level management planning. We also have a growing business intelligence practice that leverages best in class solutions such as Microsoft's Power BI. Uh, Progility off also offers a set of pre-built software solutions and accelerators based upon 16 years of experience, uh, including a set of Hammerhead products that provide improved access to your cloud PPM data, accelerate access to visual reports and dashboards using Power BI, and connect data between your PPM system and Azure DevOps, Teams, Microsoft Planner, and Active Directory to improve visibility, insight, and control over your work, people, and projects. Finally, Progility provides post-implementation support services, including expert care, which is designed to assist your PMO with gaining on-demand expertise on the solutions supported. We also offer training for your end users and administrators and have an e-learning offering that can improve consistency and adoption for your users of your project management tools. We do have a few final webinars for the series uh, covering how to use Project for the Web to manage business projects. We also have our virtual project conference coming up, which I will briefly go over as well. Uh, you can register for these events through the Eventbrite link provided or by searching Eventbrite Progility in your browser. So we hope you can join us for these sessions. On October 13th, like I said, we'll be hosting a two hour virtual project conference, which is specifically designed for you and your teams. Um, this special event will feature speakers that include successful enterprise clients presenting their lessons learned and best practices for deployment and adoption of project. Uh, we'll also have a presentation by a Microsoft expert on the state of project and its overall direction. And we'll also provide guidance from Progility experts on how to improve your existing project online system and planning and functionality considerations when looking into project for the web versus project online. Uh, you and your teams do not want to miss this exciting event, so registration is limited and you can sign up today. All videos from this and previous series are available on our best practice playlist on YouTube, which is listed here on this page. Topics range from managing your digital transformation program using PPM technologies to integrating PPM with agile and line of business applications. So feel free to, to subscribe and access this library at any time and share it with your colleagues. So with that, I will hand the presentation over to Rob Hirschman, who is a partner at Progility. Rob, the floor is yours. Thanks, Sarah, and thanks everyone for joining in our webinar today. Uh, we're going to be focused on how you can leverage Power Apps in your project management process. We're going to be going through a little bit of what the information you would typically be tracking that would require something like a Power App or the Power Platform in general, specific to project management. We'll give you a quick overview of what the Power Platform is. We get a lot of questions of what are the different components. They all have confusing names. Everything has the word power in it. So we're going to demystify that and talk a little bit about what those things are. Uh, we'll give you some very specific examples and use cases where we've seen clients have started to use Power Platform to support project management processes. Give you some examples of the business problem, uh, how they address the problem, what the technology looks like, and some example screenshots. Walk you through a quick demonstration of some examples so you can try to visualize some of that as well. And then walk you through some different planning considerations. If you're thinking about going down this road, what are some key things to think about and questions to ask? You know, Power, Power Platform is a separate application stack than what we're talking about with Microsoft Project. 
So if we think about it, what kind of information are you typically tracking about your projects? Basic project information. And most people kind of think the center of the world is Microsoft Project. Project is just the schedule, and it's the schedule and the scheduling related components. While that's really important to tracking and managing your project's progress and your forecast, there's other data and metadata and information that you're going to be tracking about your projects. We can kind of go around this circle here. You've got documents and documentation on your projects, deliverables. You've got financials. A lot of times you want to capture plan versus actual or client invoices or money that's coming in or going out. So you want to track what you're spending and what you should have spent. You want to have a collaboration workspace where folks can work together and collaborate on different components. You're going to be tracking tasks in progress and work. That's pretty standard for project management. And also you may be tracking different relationships, maybe partnerships or contractors or subcontractors as you work through different types of project management processes. Kind of on the left side, obviously you've got to have security and controlling access to all of this data and information. You've got to have a communications platform where folks can communicate in near real time, leveraging tools like Microsoft Teams in the middle. Uh, you've got workflows and procedures and processes you want people to follow to submit information, to review information, to approve information, and finally close that out and make decisions on it. You want to have reporting across this entire life cycle, and you're also going to have different methodologies you're going to be presenting and using agile waterfall, some kind of a mix of those, whatever it is. The key at the bottom is you want to have this in real time and always have access to that real time data. If you look at a traditional Microsoft based project management system with Microsoft project, the hub, you have different components of that. You know, with the SharePoint platform, we went from project to now project with documents and collaboration. With Project Server and Project Online, you can now capture project metadata and information. You can also do task tracking and task management, but there are other components such as financial management, detailed collaboration, uh, invoicing, and different workflows and processes that are, that are not naturally built into that platform. You need to extend it out, and this is really a great way to start thinking about using that Power Platform. So what is the Power Platform? The Power Platform was designed by Microsoft several years ago as a pure cloud-based platform for delivering and managing work wherever it's happening. And the concept is you have different components of the Power Platform that essentially become your building blocks. Think of it really as a series of Lego parts that you can put together in different ways to build applications and support those applications and Microsoft's touting it as kind of low code approach to this. So instead of having to build custom applications, you're using this platform, taking different Lego pieces, bringing them together, doing the development you need to meet the business process needs, and then deploying that. You know, within the platform, you've got Power BI, and probably the most popular application in the Power Platform is Power BI today. That is your self-service analytics, dashboarding, and reporting tool set as a part of Office 365 that can mine data across Power Platform and outside of that. That's pretty, pretty well established today. Power Apps is the second component, and this is really the application and form component where you're going to be able to go in and design and build forms, applications, and data behind it. So this is where you're actually going to build your logic and the data you're going to be collecting into tables and fields and information. We've got Power Automate to the right of that, and that's really our process automation tool from Microsoft that allows us to take data and move it from different endpoints. Take data from one point, move it through a workflow, get it approved, maybe it taps into a different system, it comes back. Power Automate is a low, low code uh, approach to doing this between different applications and data sources. Power Virtual Agents was released about two years ago, and it's a way you can actually leverage asking normal English questions to get data and information you need across this and other application platforms. So that's a different component of it. And finally, we have Project, and Project entered the Power Platform about a year and a half or two years ago with the launch of Project for the Web. And most people don't know, behind the scenes in Project for the Web is a Power Apps application and a database that you can then grow out and extend out with different procedures and processes. So if you think about it from a project management perspective, you're not just stuck with Project, or you don't have Project Online and SharePoint, you can now extend that out and do lots of other things and meet lots of other business process needs you might have. Kind of below the covers of the Power Platform, you've got what we call data connectors, which allow you to tap into different data sources. You can go from maybe uh, a SharePoint list over to a ServiceNow application, over into Microsoft Dynamics CRM, into Microsoft Project Online. You can tap into those with different data connectors that Microsoft and others are part of publishing out. You can design and build Power Platform portals unique to the data you're pulling together. So you have a portal capability here. You've got something called the AI Builder, and this is very advanced. It allows you to do artificial intelligence to look and mine across all of your applications and data in different ways and have AI, the AI engine Microsoft has been building on, really surface your data and information. 
And finally, the Dataverse. The Dataverse is very, very important. That is Microsoft's Office 365 database in the cloud. It's delivered through the Power Platform, so behind any Power app you may have, naturally is going to be the Dataverse. You can certainly tap into other data to databases, like a SQL or an Oracle database, but the Dataverse is going to be the central data store in Office 365, where anytime you set up a Power app, the tables and fields and all the different components are built into that Dataverse database. So this is really going forward. This is the platform of the future for Microsoft, where they're going to be recommending applications be designed, built, and deployed through. They're part delivered all through Office 365 natively. That's really important. So you don't have to go outside of Office 365 to access these. So you know why is Power Platform important? Why should you even care about this? Um, there's really five reasons you may want to start to think about caring about it. One of the big ones is that we found a lot of organizations have gone quote unquote all in on Office 365. And that means wherever possible, they're going to try to surface data and information through the Office 365 cloud. So whether it's using Teams as a user interface and in applica different applications, deploying Office 365 native applications using Microsoft Forms, um, and developing applications using tools like the Power Platform, this is really, as you see in the red box, this is the future of development and of the development platform for Microsoft. It's all within Office 365 and it's all based on the Power Platform. It is a pure cloud architecture and a pure cloud, data, cloud database, the Dataverse, as we mentioned before. So all of your data is going to be securely stored in the Microsoft Office 365 ecosystem and out there in Azure. Um, it also allows for integration inside and outside of Office 365, which is really nice for data connectors, for workflows, for applications. You're not just glued into Office 365. That's the delivery platform and the build platform, but you may have application data in other applications and places, a service management application, a help desk, maybe a financial application. You can tap into all of that using the Office 365 cloud. It's really, if we look down at the blue box, this is going to be the platform going forward for Microsoft for replacing any native apps, any apps you've built maybe in a pre-Office 365 environment with on-premise custom custom.net applications or Java applications. You can re-platform them as a native app in Office 365 using the Power Platform. And you'll see here, really, when we look at where projects going in the future, you know, all the next generation of project will live in Office 365. It lives there today, but just from a pure architecture perspective, it's going to be living on this Power Platform. So it's really important that you start thinking about it. You may not have any specific use cases right now, but it's something to start planning for in the future. So if we start looking at some different examples, of where is Power Platform relevant when it comes to project management processes? We'll give you some examples. You know, the first of those is maybe we want to capture a project business case. If you think about it today, if you were to go into you know, be Microsoft Project Online, you can capture some metadata, but it's, you know, it's standard metadata around a project management application. What if I wanted a real application to capture a real business case? That's something the Power Platform may be able to support. Or maybe we want to do something like process issues and risks. Maybe we want to not only capture a risk, we want to have a procedure for triaging that. We want to have assignments around it. Maybe we want tasks to come out from that risk. Maybe we want that to be escalated to a certain level and provide visibility. And maybe we want to promote a risk to an issue at some point when that risk is actually realized. Really good use case for the Power Platform where you'd probably have to do some custom development before. Another one is contracts and invoicing on your projects. You know, where do you store this stuff? It's typically in a financial application like, like an Oracle Financials, and then you've got your project management information in a different system. Well, why not put it all in one place and store it all centrally? And you can start to think about using the Power Platform to support this, this ancillary business process around planning and delivering projects. You got to have contracts, you got to invoice, maybe you're getting invoices from your subcontractors and your vendors. Power Platform is a very, very good way to think about using that. Uh, another use case we've seen from a lot of our clients is capturing benefits or objectives and K results or OKRs. You know, natively in Microsoft Project, not really a good way to do that. Um, you can kind of create some custom fields or some SharePoint elements that do that. But if you wanted to have it native where you can track it and report off it across a program and a portfolio and projects and have program specific benefits and OKRs, really good way to think about it. And finally, maybe you want to manage the application lifecycle, the ALM. You, know, you think about it after the project's completed, but what then? You know, now I've built an application or a tool or a database. You know, I want to manage the life cycle of that application and see what's it costing me, who's working on things, what activities do I have around that? You know, that's really ALM. It's not PPM anymore, but you know, typically I'd go into a whole other system to do that. But why not have a component that's a power app that supports that? And then you can report off the full life cycle of a project. Here's what that application was when I was building it. Here's what it is in operations. And here's kind of the cost across all of that and the effort across all of that. So these are just some examples of how we've seen some clients using Power Platform to support different business processes around project management.
What I want to do now is take a couple minutes to walk you through three examples that we just talked about. You know, the first one is project business cases. If you think about kind of the common problem most organizations have, you know, most people build their business cases in office. They build it with a Word document. Maybe they have a PowerPoint to present that business case to executives. What happens is you don't have organizational visibility into that data. You've got copies of documents that are out there. They're on shared drives or in a OneDrive or a SharePoint site, but it's a document. It's not data. And there really is no native business case functionality in either project online or project for the web. Uh, you know, business cases are often manually added as documents. Well, shouldn't they be automated in some way? Shouldn't that be part of your overall life cycle? So the power app solution down at the bottom is what if you can capture all your business cases and maintain them in an application instead of in documents? That makes it reportable and you can track the history of that. What if you had user selectable custom few fields and views so you could sort that data and have a better user experience around that? What if you can search across all that information, look for very specific business cases? And what if you can actually guide people through a process to do the capture, the review, the submission, and the approval of that within one system? So the business case is a really important part of a project. It's the pre-project, it's kind of when the, the, the project is a baby and you're thinking about actually having that baby grow up a little bit. And this is where you can use the Dataverse, that database, the Office 365 native database, it's available for custom business intelligence for reporting to have a hands-off approach to project management, to, to reporting, so you have all the data to report off that. You know, what does this look like in the big purple box here? You know, you've got on the left, you've got your UX or your user, your user layer, where people are going to enter in, maintain and update business cases in one interface. Below that, you're gonna see you have different views of the data. You may be able to look at business cases by sponsor, by initiative, by business area, or by project type. So you've got that UI layer that's consistent, then flowing to the right of that, we've got business rules and automation. And this is where we're gonna have Power Automate play a role. Maybe we've got specific review and approval processes. Maybe we've got forums below that and different views management so people can only see certain information. You can control access to that. At the data layer on the far right, we've got the Dataverse, where we've got all the data from our business case in a single set of tables. We've got different data fields. And below that, you can see we've got fields for maybe the name of the business case, who is the sponsor, what is the value proposition of the business case? What is the entry date? What type of initiative is it? What project type? You can get the feeling for this is how you could build out business case a business case structure. And then down in the middle, you have reporting. We always want to report off all this. And this is kind of the structure we go at at Progility when we start thinking about, you know, what is the common problem? What is the technical solution? And what is this going to look like? And, you know, when we go to the Power Platform, we look at the UX layer, the rules, the reporting, and also the data layer. So it's almost like building a traditional application, but you're doing it in a much more rapid way because of the Microsoft platform and the availability all in the cloud. And just to show you what that might look like, again, user interface is very consistent. I would go into a single menu. I would go into a project or select business cases, and then I would submit my business case information, the description, the business case, the value statement, and below that, maybe the prioritization of this business case. How does it align with the organizational needs? to employee retention, to lowering cost, and maybe down at the bottom right, you can see risk. We have prioritization score. We can have a score that's calculated based off of our OKRs or our metrics. We wanna measure to see what value this project's gonna give us from a business perspective. So this is a great way to think about using Power Apps, capturing and, and triaging that business case throughout its life cycle. Kind of taking that second one on, and this is a very common use case we see from a lot of clients, is risk and issue management. You know, today, the problem is, you know, a lot of people don't have a way to capture these in a programmatic way. You could be using Project Online and SharePoint Online to capture it lists of risks and issues, which is great. But once they're captured, there's really no mechanism or no automation to do any review and promotion cycles. So what you see is you have double entry. I create a risk. I work with that as a risk. I assign it to people and then I got to go create another an issue. So now I've got a risk and an issue being separate entities. So there are some homegrown solutions we've seen, but they have difficulty tying these things together. And maybe you want to see, you know, program level risks or portfolio level issues. You know, that's harder to do. Mine is just aggregating it through report. What if I have a true program level risk that's not related to a specific project? That's an example. When we start looking at the Power App solution, the first part of that solution would be risks and issues would be separate tables that are in our Dataverse database. Second component is the risk and issue tables can tie to lookup fields to tie them into projects. We can not only tie them into projects, we could tie them into programs, we could tie them into portfolios, or we could tie them into any other elements you may have, applications as a good example. So show me some of the risks to the ongoing management or maintenance of a specific application. 
Again, it's a unique set of entities and we can relate it through that table structure. We can then use tools like Power Automate to automatically promote a risk to an issue when it occurs based off a of specific user action. That way we don't have double entry. We're saving people time and frustration and not having to enter information multiple times. And finally, just like before with our business case, the Dataverse and the data within it is readily available for reporting. So we can provide access to that data, provide a structure with it with tables, and report off it through Power BI. Going through the same structure here, we've got our UX layer, where we're going to, on the far left, we're going to enter new risks and issues, maintain, and update them there. We've got different tables below that. We may have project risks and issues. We may look at them by status or by program or portfolio. Our business rules and automation will be leveraging Power Automate to promote a risk to an issue or maybe having an approval workflow or an escalation. We have forms and view management below that. And on the right, we've got those separate tables we mentioned. We've got risks and issues, and then we've got fields of information below each. And that's how we can tie different fields there to other tables we have, to the project table, to the program table, or maybe to a portfolio table or an application table. And you can kind of think about how this might relate to your organization. And finally, we have that business intelligence layer. So just like before, again, a common user interface, we're going to be entering and tracking our risks and issues and summarizing that and reporting on that in a way or doing escalations around that and having specific actions. Third use case is contracts and invoicing. And I can guarantee if you do any work in a PMO or you do any kind of project work, you're going to be getting invoices from vendors, from contractors for hardware and software or cloud services at this point. Um, you know, the common problems here. The first one of those is we often have these detailed third party relationships, but they're managed in documents. We've got contract documents and relationships in PDFs and in Office and Excel files. The problem is that detail is scattered across documents and it's not easily accessible for execution and tracking back to plan versus actual. Each document type you have may need to be tracked in a very different way. You may have invoices that need to be approved monthly, or you may have weekly reviews of timesheets that need to be approved. So you're gonna have different cycles based on different contract terms you have. It's not a one size fits all from a business perspective. What we found is that consolidating and, and coordinating this information is manual and time consuming. You often have a PMO administrator or a project analyst that has to do all that stuff. Well, you know, why not automate a lot of this and pull it together? Power Apps is a great solution for that. You've again got those custom tables to collect, store, and maintain metadata or information. You've got unique business processes to automate the life cycle around things like invoice approval and routing and reviews. Then you've got those custom tables to make use of these lookup fields to tie things to projects. We may have two invoices that tie to a project and to an application. So we can tie things to projects, programs, portfolios, and applications and associate them appropriately and then report off all that information. We have flexibility with the hierarchy. We're not locked into one way of doing it. And as before, we've got reporting. You know, the data is in the dataverse. We can report off it using business intelligence and Power BI. So same kind of structure at our UX layer on the left. We enter new, we view, maintain contracts, invoices, maybe even purchase orders as they're coming in. You can think about kind of a construction management scenario. We're getting a lot of purchase orders and a lot of invoices from our contractors or vendors. We have different views at the bottom. Maybe we want to look at active contracts. We want to take a look at our invoices by vendor. We want to start looking at purchase orders by project and analyze that so we can see what we spent against what we should have spent. We've then got our business rules where we've got unique business processes for contracts, for invoices and purchase orders forms and views management, so we're providing access to the right people, the right information. And then on the right, we've got those data layers. We've got a contracts table, an invoice table, and a purchase order table. And then for each of those, we have different fields of information we're capturing. Then we can, at the bottom, relate that to portfolios, programs, projects, applications. You can kind of get the feeling here. So it's really a very flexible way to go about it in terms of tracking this kind of information. If you think about what this might look like in the real world, we may have a contract lifecycle workflow that goes from initiation through planning, through setup, execution, and closeout. And each of those you can see we've got for the contract, we've got a name, client, a status of it, how it was purchased. On the right, we can set up budget line items for total contract value, how much was invoiced, when it was invoiced. And on the far right, we have dates of delivery. You know, what is the period of performance start and end on the contract? When did it start? When was it signed? Where is it linked into my project management components? Is there a schedule around it? And you can see the different tabs of information for unique contract line items, 
purchase orders, invoices. So we've got different tables. And this is a great way to think about tracking and managing the life cycle of contracts and invoices without having to go into a full finance system. It can all be in one place. This is really one of the really nice things about it. Then you can get into the invoice layer and you get from a contract to an invoice. When was the invoice sent? What's the status of it? On the right, how much has been invoiced? Were there expenses? Did you invoice? Was there a credit? All of this information. Again, consistent user interface and experience. This is really one of the strengths of Power Apps. And I'm going to show you now in a quick demo. What I've pulled up on my screen through Office 365 is now Project Online. We're working in a standard Project Online environment. We've got our workflow and our processes here. We've got all of our unique components here, standard Project Online stuff. Down at the bottom, we've deployed a couple of specific Power Apps. So let's say we're in a, we're in a scenario where we want to track budget on a specific project. You know, we can do this from a project page or we could do it at an enterprise level. We could actually go in and have a budget tracking application where we may have a new budget line item. We could submit that on this project. We can give it a title, put an amount in, save that. We've built a very unique application. It's taken us into Power Apps. You can see at the top, it says Power Apps here and what the actual application is. The data here is being stored in the Dataverse. So if it's you know a specific line item we want to review, um, if there's specific visits we have, if we have a conference, you know maybe we've got a team event, you know, we've got a show coming up. Maybe these are some marketing events or specific client related things or their events related to the project here. And then we can start to drill down and see what we're spending on different components. So we can actually start integrating in maybe spend on projects directly in through Microsoft Project Online using a Power App. Or a lot of folks we've, we've learned, you know, they want to do customer satisfaction. They're going throughout the life cycle of a project. They want to get feedback from their internal customers. They want to be able to go in and say, well, what was the feedback that was submitted by a certain customer at a certain point in time? And just the ability to click on that and now get an overview. You know, we've got one of our clients has come in and they've given us a customer health rating of 100% on customer sat, which is great. How much of our service are they actually using on an ongoing basis? Who's the key contact for the client that submitted this? What feedback did they give us? Do I have any active work orders going on? If I know CSAT is high, service utilization is minute, somewhere in the middle, this may be a great upselling opportunity for me. I may see if I have any in-process orders with them or any invoices that are outstanding right now. I may see what they've come and done in the past, or I may come in here and add some customer feedback right here, where I can have, again, an app where they say, you know, how much a client can come in and say, how much did you use? Do you need more technical support? When are you going to increase your volume? How happy are you with our services? And submit these kind of fields of information. And then that's going to feed into my customer sat roll up in my reports and dashboards here. And this is a power app that can be used to not only capture the customer satisfaction, but also allow you to view it by a client by client and then report off this using a tool like a Power BI. So this is a really great way to think about it if you want to get your customer feedback instead of building a custom SharePoint list and having someone have to go to a SharePoint site and enter it in. Build an app that does it, and it's very unique. It's very user friendly. It can be used on their iPhone and their tablet and their Android device, whatever, or their PC. And they can very quickly and easy go in and submit customer uh, customer satisfaction ratings. Another good use case for Power Apps. Now, you know, a final one we found is sometimes you know you want to capture information from mobile users. You know, one of the great things about Power Apps is you can design an application that can be either mobile and or desktop friendly. So let's say we have a lot of people that are on the go. Maybe it's our sales team in the field and they always have great ideas for new projects, but I have no way to log them. So what I can do is I can actually deploy a power app to submit an idea. And this is what it would look like on the user's phone where they can come in and say, you know, I want to capture good ideas. These folks always have good ideas. You know, give that idea a title. What do you think this thing's going to cost us? You know, maybe it's only a $2,500 cost, but I think we're going to see about $10,000 in new net new revenue. You know, how important is this to the business? You know, what's the business alignment? This will help. You know, what areas of the business does it impact? Manufacturing, procurement, design, R&D. You know, what's the status of it? And I can move this or I can control this. And finally, does it map to a product line I have? Maybe I'm doing product lifecycle management. I think, you know, folks in the field could give me really good ideas on new products as well as projects. We could submit ideas and allow people to come in and review those ideas. And then do these on their phone or their tablet or their PC. Again, this is a power app that's capturing information that's integrating with our project management lifecycle in a certain way, shape, or fashion. And these are just a couple of examples of how you could use power apps. We showed you some structural examples. Now we're going to show you some actual real world examples here. So if you're thinking about going down this road, Power Platform is a different platform. It's something new to learn for your teams. 
So some planning considerations for you and your team. You know, do you have any compelling use cases or business problems the Power Platform could support? You know, we went through some examples today, but if you think about from a project management perspective, what are some things you've always wanted to automate, but you really did couldn't do it because the platform wasn't available, you didn't have a bunch of developers laying around to do it, or you just didn't have the resources to do it? This may be a really, really great time to jump in and address those. So, you know, what are these use cases that you could support? The second part, and this has more to do with IT, do you have an IT governance model or some kind of a plan for Power Platform? And this is something you're gonna have to work with IT around. You know, a lot of folks think they can go out and buy a web-based app and just start doing stuff. That's not very secure. What you wanna do is think about how you can do things in your environment, in your network, potentially in Office 365. And IT really has to make this platform available and work with you because they're the ones that have to support it on the back end while you support the front end of the app. So think about, you know, IT, is IT supporting Power Platform? Are they there yet? Are they going down this road? Is this a platform that's gonna be available? Because with Power Platform, as much as anything else, it's not just about the technology. You have to have the people in place that are gonna help support the platform and the application. You're gonna have to have a process or procedure in place to go through governance and reviews and environment control and things like that. And then you have to have background on the technology. Since Power Platform is so new, a lot of organizations are just learning a lot of the stuff around the technology now. We can definitely help ramp those folks up if you need any assistance. You know, and a really good thing to think about is, you know, could our PMO or our project management be a really good first use case for using the Power Platform? If you think about it, it's very well structured. You have very specific requirements. You know what you need. You do them every day. Maybe you can pick off two or three processes you're, using, you're, you're doing manually today around your project management system, deploy them in Power Apps, and integrate it in with your current PPM application. It's a pretty good way to think about doing this stuff. Um, also, you want to ask, is there an existing environment or a technology like Microsoft Project, Project Online, that you could use Power Platform to extend out? You know, you're not going to want to start with Power Platform and build a project management application. You're going to want to start with a project management application that does certain things and build things around that. Because PPM applications have a certain commercial off-the-shelf set of processes they support, and those are just great. But there are always going to be gaps between how you do business and what those tools can support. And that's where Power Platform can be a nice fit. Additionally, you may have some legacy applications around your project management tools. You know, you may have a finance, just a, a project financial application you built, someone built in .NET 15 years ago, or a light invoicing application that takes invoices and routes them through an approval process and then puts them in a SharePoint library or on a shared drive or something like that. You know, is there an opportunity here to sunset those applications so you don't have to support them anymore? A lot of them are on really old legacy technology that frankly probably isn't supported anyway. So when the people that wrote that are gone from the organization, you're gonna have a big problem. Now's the time to look at replatforming this. So are there any legacy applications we can think about replatforming? So, you know, our goal today was to give you an overview of some of the possibilities with Power Platform. Obviously, this being a really an application platform and a, a workflow and business process platform, there's a lot of possibilities with it, but hopefully this gave you some really good ideas. Uh, so with this, I'm gonna hand it back to Sarah, who's gonna get into our question and answer. Sarah? Thanks a lot, Rob. Uh, if you have any questions, please type them into the live event um, Q&A chat box. And while folks are doing that, Sarah, I'll let people know that from a licensing perspective, there, there's components of Power Platform that are often included in Office 365 licenses. The, the core E3 and E5 do include a base Power Platform license. And then what you can actually do is there's, there's a, a Power App through Teams, where if you build a Power App and deliver it through a Teams user interface as a core Teams app, uh, that's actually free. So Microsoft doesn't charge you for those applications. There's some limitations to them um, where you can't go kind of full bore with them, but they can meet the majority of the needs of a lot of organizations we've seen. So if you have any questions around the licensing as well, every organization has a little different licensing and the licensing is, is constantly evolving around the Power Platform, but you may find you own a lot of this capability already. Thanks, Rob. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the Q&A chat box. All right, it looks like that's it for questions. Um, with the, with the Power Platform being so new, we found so many organizations have ideas on how to leverage it, but no actual use in their environment. So maybe you have some ideas. 
If so, let's talk and uh, reach out to us and we can set up some time to do a discovery session with our team of Power Platform Experts at Pragility. Uh, my contact information is listed here. And we thank you for joining our webinar today. So feel free to reach out again with any questions or specific training or implementation requirements you might have. Um, again, I'm Sarah Howard with Pragility, and we will see you on our next webinar. Thanks again.